behind me is the historic village of Ardmore here in County Waterford. The name Ardmore is a corruption from the Irish language meaning the great height. This name is believed to have been given to the area by the early fishermen who used the tall headland as an aid to navigation long before the emergence of instruments. As I take you on tour across the different monastic sites of Ardmore, it will become very clear why I have chosen this area as my project, because it brims with character and it is easy to develop a sense of place here. A couple of hours in Ardmore and the memories will remain with you for a lifetime. So why is this place unique? Because this is the very cradle of Christianity in Ireland, the place where it all started, where the seeds were sown which would gain Ireland the title of the island of saints and scholars still several centuries hence. This then is the territory of Saint Declan, the holy man who left Ireland to study in Rome and who returned as a monk and bishop in the early 5th century, the years immediately prior to the arrival of Saint Patrick to spread the gospel among the Irish of this region. Unlike Patrick, whose mission it was to convert all of the pagans in the land, Saint Declan confined himself to the area which is now West Waterford, with only occasional forays outside his territory. Even before the place became a monastic settlement and an inhabited area of what was then a forest-covered Ireland, it must have looked beautiful even to the pagan Celts from the tribe of the Daishi, who had come southwards from the middle of the country in the 4th century to populate this place. Today, and for a couple of centuries past, it is this charm, the very physical beauty of the place, which attracts the thousands of visitors who come here each year, either as day trippers or as summer residents in the hundreds of holiday homes in the area. Some families have been coming here for generations and consider it their second home, and for many, their sense of this place is very strong indeed. It would be impossible to live in Ardmore for any short time without realising that the place is very special indeed. What makes art more special for many of the visitors and for the country as a whole is its place in our history as the cradle of Christianity in Ireland. It is a title and a claim which is treasured by the local population and which is a great source of pride to them. If ever a people in this part of the country had a sense of place and also a great pride in their place, then it is surely the residents of this little village which in 1992 earned for itself the additional distinction of being named the tidiest town in Ireland, a greatly coveted and highly prized accolade. Resident and visitor alike know well that Ardmore is the cradle of Irish Christianity and behind me here are the ruins of the monastery of Ardmore with its famous round tower, the last one of its kind to be built in Ireland about a thousand years ago. At that stage the Viking threat had been extinguished at the Battle of Clontarf 1014 and long after St. Declan had gone to his eternal reward to be buried in the smallest of the three buildings, the Bianacon, down here on our right. This hallowed place, the location of the original monastery of St. Declan, has a set of ruins which still tell of the pride, the learning and the history of the area and the beginning of the Golden Age in Ireland. The watchtower which was constructed in the 11th century, also served as a cloak shock, the bell tower, and of course as a place of refuge in times of attack. The monks would retreat up their ladder to the door at 12 feet high with their sacred vessels, their scrolls and their parchments, and along with the local people, sheltered there until the trouble had passed. Not so when Oliver Cromwell's general, Lord Broghill, the Earl of Cork, laid siege to the tower and the nearby castle, for Having sought their surrender with at least a suggestion of terms, he hanged 117 of them after they emerged without weapons. It was a dark day indeed for Ardmore. Here inside the cathedral are many interesting details from over the centuries. Uh, you will see ahead the older 10th century building with little decoration, while two centuries later the stone door and the window frames have become more decorated and have been built in a distinctive Romanesque style. This is the original capstone of the round tower, which was damaged, obviously, by lightning or by weather and had to be replaced. Here we have one of the 320 or so ohm stones, 
which are to be found around Ireland, mainly in the counties of Kerry, Cork, Waterford and Kilkenny. The stones can date from anywhere between the 5th and 15th centuries, and the inscription is by way of letters denoted by lines cut in the stones, each set of cuts being one letter. They were used to commemorate significant people, and it is speculated that this stone might actually commemorate the father of St. Declan. This is the famous western gable of the cathedral, with two very fine lunettes with biblical scenes, as well as others on the arcade above. Very identifiable are Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden on the left, and on the right above is the Judgment of Solomon, and below the arrival of the Magi at the Epiphany. The smallest and best preserved building of the three, called the Bianacon, is the oldest on the site dating back to the 7th century. It is believed to be the resting place of St. Declan himself, and would have been identified as such less than 200 years after the saint's death so it is probably authentic. And so we come to our final and finest location, St. Declan's Retreat or St. Declan's Hermitage. As leader of his monks, as well as the community of families, workers, farmers and Christian settlement which was Ardmore, Declan too, like his eternal master, would have needed to retreat from the cares of office. This was his desert where he came to commune with his God. This is where the local community celebrate Declan on the 23rd and the 24th of July, the vigil of his official feast day and on the great day itself. Here they pray, process around the old church grounds and ask for favours, or thank him for those already granted. They take water from the holy well, bless themselves. Before they left, people throughout the generations and the centuries inscribed the sign of a cross here with a little pebble picked from the ground. And the depth of their faith can be seen in the depth of the crosses where the altar used to be. All that is here today are the ruins and the peace and quiet which Declan sought as he spent his time in reflection, contemplation and renewal here. And sometimes, when the sun shines, when the birds sing, and we can hear only the lapping of the waves. We can imagine Declan himself refreshing his spirit here. And so, as we take our leave of Ardmore, we bid you goodbye in our native tongue and pray to Declan that we meet here soon again. Slán go pól, agus a merimid bió ar an aumsio ar ish. And that is why this is my special place. That is the uniqueness of Ardmore. Thank you.